Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy, and development in Nigeria and around the world. Senator Ali Ndume, the senator representing Bronu South in the National Assembly, and who until recently was the Senate's leader has apologized to the ruling All Progressive Congress for criticizing President Bola Metinobo. In other words, he has apologized for speaking truth to power. What was the offense of Aline Dume? Aline Dume raised the alarm that the presidency is aloof to the suffering of Nigerians, suffering that was largely created by the policies and programs of the President Bolami Tinubu administration. And we all are aware that there are two major policies that Bolami Tinubu made that has literally destroyed the economy of Nigeria or created an economic crisis of generational proportions as was rightly uh, identified by the New York Times and the Financial Times. New York Times of U U United States and Financial Times of London. In the editorial they wrote recently about the state of the Nigerian economy, they said that the economy of Nigeria presently was of the kind of crisis we have is of a generational proportion. And uh, of course, the government of Bola Mitrubu is not happy about that. And the administration, in response to the New York Times, in particular, Bayo Onanoga, the special advisor to the president on information and strategy blamed the, uh, the blamed the New York Times for not uh, doing their homework well, saying that the New York Times did not recognize the fact that they inherited a dead economy from the Buhari administration. But if you read the report by the New York Times, they were specific on what they held responsible for the downward spiral of the Nigerian economy. They mentioned the partial removal of the first subsidy in Nigeria under Tinubu and the flotation of the Nigerian Naira. Those were the two key points that put the economy the way it is today. So the New York Times did not agree that it was the problem was basically that created by Buhari. What happened was that Tinubu's two policies, these two policies by Tinubu was like pouring petrol inside fire. Not that the economy was in any better shape under the Buhari administration. But the Tinubu administration poured fire poured petrol inside a raging fire. Now Ali Dumo understood this and said, look, things are bad. People are hungry. People are hungry and nobody can reach the president. And you can understand that Ali Dume, being Senate leader at the time he spoke, if he cannot have access to the president, then you can therefore imagine how detached the presidency was from realities in Nigeria. So he raised the alarm, and according to him, he reached out to some people in the presidency and told them, look, people are hungry. And the presidency's response was that that's the figment of imagination created by the opposition. And Ali Duma was shocked that that could be their response. 
But you can also see that most of the problem in the country right now, they blame it on the opposition. Even the president's speech responding to the protest, you can see that he made reference to opposition taking advantage of the situation. So they have this mindset that is the opposition. They are not, they don't seem to be aware that Nigerians are dying of hunger and starvation. And Alin Dume spoke to, to power. Because of that, that his outspokenness, he lost his uh, position in the Senate leadership. He was removed. The party wrote to the Senate and he was removed. So, having been removed, uh, he is still talking, he has been still talking, he has, he, uh, he has continued to talk tough. They now invited him to the Secretariat, National Secretariat. The National Chairman, uh, Dr. Ablahi de Ganduje, invited him. They have to reprimand him to tell him, look, we're going to take a disciplinary action against you. You have to publicly apologize. And he apologized, obviously, for speaking truth to power. It therefore means that the APC is even making its own matters worse because it don't want to hear the truth. For you to know that Ndume understood the situation of the nation and the problem facing his constituents, Go and check the response of the North to, to the uh, nationwide protest under the hashtag uh, end bad governance in Nigeria. You discover that the protest was more intense in North East Nigeria followed by Northwest Nigeria, followed by North Central Nigeria, then followed by South South Nigeria, followed by Southwest, and then no protest in the Southeast. Now this, this dimension of the protest validated a recent research work that was done by statisticians, we show that poverty is highest in the Northeast, followed by Northwest, followed by North Central, followed by South South, followed by Southwest. The Southeast has the least poverty level. So you can see that the protests validated the statisticians report and also validated the alarm that was raised by Alin Dume that people were hungry. And Alin Dume was specifically talking about his people. The protest, the intensity, the violence, even the call for regime change was basically restricted between Northeast and Northwest. So you can see that. Ali Dume did nothing wrong. He spoke truth to power and he has been validated by the outcome of the end bad governance protests, which showed that people are indeed hungry and the government has been aloof to this reality. Now, if you do not believe the report by statisticians about the poverty index in Nigeria, we show that the highest poverty rate in Nigeria is in the Northeast. And the least poverty rate in Nigeria is in the Southeast. You can also go and look at the report by United Nations Development Program on malnutrition. If you go, go and check how much, the good thing about this, this the world we live in today is that the Google is there for you to go and search. There are so many... Um, the information is just at the tip of our fingers. You can go and check it out. How much the United Nations Development Program is spending for malnutrition 
in the northeast, northwest, north central, south south, south south uh, southwest, and southeast. You will see that the bulk of the money that the United Nations Development Program spends on malnutrition is highest in the northeast, followed by northwest, followed by north central. I doubt if there have been any, I have, I have not seen any, any malnutrition program that United Nations Development Program had in the Southeast. Unless you are telling me that the federal government of Nigeria deliberately don't want to take care of those who are malnourished in the Southeast, in their partnership programs with the United Nations Development Program and therefore did not include any state in the Southeast to benefit from the malnutrition programs. Now, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that Alin Dume ought not to have apologized. They ought not to have even invited him to come and apologize. They ought to be praising him for speaking truth to power. Because look, Alin Dume in his apologies when he came out from the secretariat after the meeting with the party leadership, said that uh, he has been uh, reprimanded and told that he ought to have come to the party first and not go to the media. That he ought to have, if he found anything, if he could not assess the president, he should come to the party. If there is anything going wrong in the administration, he has to come to the party. He is not supposed to say it in public. Not even in the animal farm have we seen a kind of, this kind of gagging of lawmakers. In other words, the APC is not ready to hear the truth. So how are they going to be able to solve the problem or the problems of this nation? It also means that the president, President Bola Metinubu, only wants to hear what is sweet to his ears. He don't want to hear cultural reviews. The party leadership are also flowing in that direction, which, is the, which also confirms what Alin Dume said, that the presidency is detached from the Nigerian public. And that was why you can see the response of the government to the demands of the end bad governance protesters. The government left them empty-handed. It didn't concede nothing. Because in their own imagination, these are just people who are taking advantage of the uh, economic crisis in the country. They are being engineered by those who were quote-unquote defeated in the last election. And the way they say it, you will, you will think that they won free and fair election, that they should go and prepare for 2027. If you're not happy with what is happening, go and prepare for 2027. That is not a response of a listening government. Alin Dume, for political survival, has considered to them but they are going to be taught a bitter lesson in 2027. And you will say, what will Nigerians do? Well, if Nigerians allow them to, to rig the election the way they read it, rig it in 2023 and get away with it, then they can win in 2027. But I keep saying it, that the All Progressive Congress, going by their record, Right from uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari's time to date, cannot win free and fair presidential election in Nigeria. They cannot. The only reason that they, they won 2023 was because the election was not free and fair. And the only thing that could make them to win 2027, if, if, if Nigerians allow them to get away with it, they will rig it again in 2027. They cannot win free and fair election because they are totally detached from the Nigerian public. 
you can see that if not the intervention of the governors, several youths would have still been on the street and they wanted to vent their, ventilate their anger against the ruling class. Now things has quietened down. Things has, uh, have quietened down. They may think that they have won. They have defeated the protesters. They have gotten tired. Security have taken care of them. But what they have just won is a fiery victory. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.